Currently, the most popular categories on Pinterest are fashion, home and garden, food and beverage, and beauty. These are just general categories which could easily be used on Pinterest to generate traffic for a limitless number of products and services. In most cases, this is a good fit for business to consumer advertising or B2C. But don't write off your business to business or B2B just yet. You just have to get strategic and creative. When looking to build your boards and for original content inspiration, consider the following. Repins. Repinning is the fastest and easiest way to bulk up your boards. Your category boards should be designed to inspire or educate anyone who visits your site. Even though a pin is repinned, you can add your own unique comment. Just make sure the source is always clear. Next, let's talk about the importance of adding the Save Pinterest button or widget to your website. This will increase engagement on Pinterest by neatly organizing content on your site that visitors want to refer back to on their board of choice. Once saved to their board, the save has the potential to be repinned. How will they know that they can repin website graphics to their Pinterest account? When they hover over the image, the Pinterest Save button will populate. Now let's talk about quote cards. Quote cards continue to be one of the most effective pins out there. With the long list of user-friendly quote card generators, you don't even have to have graphics design skills to generate a pin worth sharing. This includes seasonal quotes, questions by industry professionals, and even original quotes and phrases relevant to your target audience. For example, three things only a nurse would understand. Next, recipes. Like we mentioned earlier when we were discussing statistics, there's over 1.7 billion recipes on Pinterest. Now, you don't want to post recipes if they're not relevant to your brand, product, or services, but if you're in any way related to food, health, beauty, fitness, or home, recipes can be a part of your mix. Next, there's infographics. Infographics come in many forms and are a visually engaging method of delivering fun facts, educational facts, product facts, or any information relevant to your primary target audience. Again, you can invest in infographics software to design your own. The great thing about infographics is that you can post them to Pinterest, your website, blogs, online content, and your other social media channels. You can even print them out for offline marketing purposes. These don't have to be the typical long-form infographics. They can just be a little square with four or five facts. Next, there's visually engaging imagery. If you're new to Pinterest, then now is the time to start browsing. What you're searching for is the quality of the photos that are performing well, the ones with lots of repins and comments. What you'll notice is that most of the posts look as though they're professionally photographed. You might not have the budget for professional photography, which is where do-it-yourself editing tools come in. Add a filter and adjust lighting and you can make most photos look better. Just make sure your editing does not misrepresent the color of your product. Then there's casual product placement. Your photos and graphics need to accurately reflect your brand, but that doesn't mean your product needs to be front and center. In some cases, front and center might be the best way to go, but in most cases, not so much. For example, if you sell luxury interior paint, well, you can only have so many photos of your paint can, paint on the wall, brushes, or of painting in the act. So instead of, or in addition to those, why not post some photos of staged living rooms with your paint on the walls? Or let's say you sell fashion accessories. Your posts will get more action if you show stylish ladies sporting your fashions, as opposed to a ton of close-ups of your jewelry or handbags just laying down on a flat surface. Now let's talk about ratios for your pins. Pins that are too tall get cut off on mobile devices. And since 80% of users use mobile devices to browse Pinterest, you really don't want that. You can upload any size pin, but not all will reformat in the visually appealing manner that we're looking for. When it comes to ratios and designing your pins, keep these tips in mind. Profile photos should be 165 by 165. Your board cover image, 217 by 146. Tiny thumbnails will be 70 by 70. The aspect ratio for pins is 2 by 3 to 1 by 3.5. The maximum pixel width is 736 pixels, but you might want to aim closer to 600. Keep long pins like infographics at 736 by 2016. The ideal pin size is 736 by 1104 to 2016. Now that you have a better understanding of how to get started, you might be searching for a few best practices to make the most out of your new social media platform. Here's just a few. Number one, follow and repin local business owners. Not competitors, but businesses you do business with or that you're a personal patron of. Odds are they'll return the favor. Bonus points if you have a shared target audience. Number two, start off with at least six boards that have at least 20 pins each. Set a goal to repin at least five per week to each board and at least three original pins. 
aim for no less than 10 boards total. Number three, keep an eye on your competitors to see what they're doing and what works. The goal is not to copy, but gain inspiration. This includes businesses in the same industry, but in other service areas, even in other countries. Number four, find ways to link back to Pinterest. Install the Pinterest Save widget to your website. Add your Pinterest URL to your monthly newsletter. Include it in your email signature. Or offer promo codes which can only be found by visiting Pinterest. Number five, while your clients can't pin to your board, you can create offline and online incentives where the winner will be featured on your social media. For example, you could provide a prize, including a celebratory pin on Pinterest, as an incentive to the 50th customer who posts creative use of product on social media. Number six, make a short list of restaurants, businesses, and brands who excel on Pinterest. Regardless of their industry, they have at least a few methods you can test. If you're not sure where to begin, simply type top pins or top add your industry pins into the Pinterest search bar to see what populates. Number seven, don't utilize Pinterest to spam your followers, but feel free to send direct messages to those who leave comments. Pinterest success will not occur overnight, but with steady activity and engagement, your organic marketing will begin to drive quality leads to your business, website, and sales funnels. Now, as great as all this info is, it's not gonna be of any use to you or your business if you don't apply what you've learned. So, roll up your sleeves and get ready to execute the steps in the following battle plan. Step one, spend an hour brainstorming your Pinterest marketing goals. Step two, think about what kind of boards and pins are most useful for your business or niche and develop a content plan. Step three, take 15 minutes to create and optimize a Pinterest account and at least six boards in accordance with what you learned in this guide. Step four, start filling your boards with pins, at least five each for starters, and begin implementing the best practices we discussed earlier.